Welcome to the new and improved Early Years Teacher Team presentation on Concepts of Print. This presentation is one in a series of four exploring emerging literacy in SBC. Today we will be looking at the steps along the pathway of the child's exciting journey towards becoming a reader and writer, as well as our role as practitioners and teachers in providing the experiences, spaces and interactions which will support them on this journey. We need to remember that each child will have a different starting point and our role is to meet them where they are and enable their progress. By the end of this session, you will have explored how the SBC reading and writing trackers relate to the four areas within the concepts of print. Identified your role in providing the interactions, experiences and spaces to do this, as well as ways in which to do this. There will be opportunities for you to pause the video in order to reflect on your current provision and identify ways to improve it. This may be done individually or as a team. Before we begin, spend a moment to think back to your memories of being read to as a child. This may have been by a parent or maybe another adult such as grandparent or teacher. How did it make you feel? Maybe you weren't read to as a child. How has this shaped how you respond to reading as an adult, as a practitioner, or maybe even as a parent? Our ability to use language unlocks all areas of learning. Children's language development thrives through exposure to environments of rich, diverse spoken language experiences. We grow a sense of purpose for the child by our own use of language and engaging them in a wide variety of stories, rhymes, songs, symbols and texts in different media all around them. Building this purpose helps to nurture engagement and encourages children to see themselves as readers and writers. This doesn't just happen by chance. Realising the Ambition 2020 Playful Literacy we can pick out some of the statements which relate to concepts of print from Realising the Ambition on pages 20, 72 and 73. When work is working with babies, encourage my social and verbal interactions with quality picture books, including both pictures and text and favourite objects connecting with my interests and family life. Connect with personal stories created by my family through familiar photos, words and objects engaging with the senses. Encourage me to make marks through sensory and messy play to support my communication of my own thoughts and ideas. When working with toddlers, continue to share quality picture books, including both pictures and text, connecting with my interests and my family life, encouraging reciprocal storytelling between you and me. Help me to connect with stories on a personal and imaginative level, developing an understanding that text conveys meaning. Give me sensory and tactile experiences which encourage me to babble, talk and have fun with books. Incorporate a wide range of interesting resources which encourage me to communicate ideas through mark making, painting and drawing. When working with young children, continue to provide me with quality picture books alongside a range of different media, fiction and non-fiction texts, connecting with my interests and family life encouraging reciprocal storytelling between you and me. Encourage enjoyment, engagement and meaning of stories and explore the connections between text and illustrations. To continue to give sensory and tactile experiences by providing resources which support talking about stories and factual texts and having fun with books. Encourage me to notice the purpose of writing in all environments and enjoy communicating my ideas through the written word. Think just for the moment about the power that we give children by enabling them to read and write. The potential they have for discovering the world and being able to communicate effectively through that written word. We may be creating the next Shakespeare or Charles Dickens or someone who their powerful use of language can change the world. After all, the pen is mightier than the sword. By being able to read, children are able to find out information, 
read for pleasure and relaxation, learn something new and even read, feed themselves if they can follow a recipe. However, how many older children do we hear say they don't like reading and writing? It's up to us to make writing and reading exciting and as accessible as possible. We can help to do this by ensuring that we provide interactions, experiences and spaces which are developmentally appropriate both indoors and out by providing quality books, exploring a range of text, valuing their mark making and being an excellent role model. As part of their work on emerging literacy, Highland and the Northern Alliance has created a developmental continuum around the four aspects of book handling, picture and story comprehension, looking and recognising and writing and story behaviours. The continuum is easily downloaded from the Highland Literacy website. During this presentation, we're going to look at these four aspects in turn and how they relate to the new SBC literacy trackers and the provision needed in your spaces, experiences and interactions. The first aspect we're going to look at is book handling. When we look at the SBC reading tracker, we can see the statements highlighted are related to this. As babies progress from using cloth or plastic books, which they may mouth on tear, they will begin to explore books by opening and closing them, turning the pages, although this may not be from front to back and they may move backwards and forwards throughout the book. Our role is to model and talk about books as we're reading them and sharing with them with the child or children. We need to demonstrate the book being the right way up, turning the pages from the front to the back, talking about how we know that the book works in this way. Maybe we might make a mistake or two for fun to see if the children notice you holding the book upside down or reading it back to front. Follow the child's lead as they explore talking about what they can see and are learning. We can support children's understanding by letting children help us turn the pages, by pointing to the pictures and text as we read to them. To support book handling skills through our spaces and interactions, we must ensure that our books are levelled both in relation to physical dexterity and cognitive development. This means that our selections must include a variety of books to meet all our children's individual stages and needs. Hardback books, touchy-feely books, lift the flat books, rhyming and interactive books, book sets, picture books and longer story books and faction fiction. As well as this, we must consider the diversity and equality throughout our books to ensure that we are promoting inclusion of all people regardless of gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation and ability. There are some beautiful age appropriate books such as And Tango Makes Three about a same sex penguin couple who bring up a chick or Julian is a mermaid about a boy dressing up to participate in the mermaid parade. Highland Literacy website has a short list of books on their website to get you started. Here we have an example of an area that has many of these progressive books. That's quite a lot of things to make sure that we, we are considering and we must ensure that our space is not too overwhelming. We must remember that as well as books being available in a specific book nook or story corner space, they must also be dispersed within other areas of the setting, both in and outdoor spaces. So pause the video and look carefully at the resources within these spaces of these images. We would like you to consider the following. What is the possible intentional promotion or line of development that the children may be exploring? What books could we use to enhance this further and encourage reading with purpose in relation to this? You may have thought of a water play tray with leaves, a few different sized logs, stones and pebbles, five frog miniature world role play objects and five little speckled frogs rhyme or book with this rhyme in it. Facts about pond life and possibly potentially floating and sinking dependent on the intentional promotion. Art and craft area, mixed objects for collaging and reference books and cards and books with artists who use collaging in their work, instruction books exploring collage. 
or maybe the outdoor space with planting and planting growing seeds and seasons, mini bugs, fact books and fiction stories too. Remember to change the books in the areas regularly and ensure that the books are suitable for early level. Within all our spaces, we must aim to ensure that the children feel invited to explore. Books across areas must be high quality and in good condition. Our book nook story corner must be cosy yet uncluttered, warm and quiet. The selection available must be small and comprehensive, including incorporating links to current interests and intentional promotion within the space for favourites to revisit again and again. Ensuring the cover of books is visible and books are easily accessible are also in key in supporting engagement, as of course is our engagement with the books alongside the children. Here we can see a space with all of these elements, comfortable seating, a cosy enclosed space, muted lighting, vegetation, there are aromatherapy scents nearby, all book covers are visible, books are easily accessible, as well as story of the week and props for interacting with this text. In order for children to cultivate that love of books we are passionate for them to have, they need to develop their understanding of the magic contained within the covers. It's only when they can understand and comprehend the pictures and words that they will be cocooned within the magical worlds books create. Initially, children focus on the pictures in a book and will begin to talk about what they can see, such as what the characters are doing. Support them by waiting for the child to comment and then building on what they've said. Give positive feedback on their comments and, react and reactions by commenting and expanding. You may make the same comments about things repeatedly. However, you must remember that it's through this repetition that children learn. Talk about the story whilst you're reading and remember to be careful when asking questions. You're not trying to test them. Remember to use the six keys to communication whilst engaging in stories with children. Find a quiet space. Be face to face or side by side. Comment on what you can see describing and naming what is happening in the books. Use visuals such as gesture, pictures and props to help the children understand new vocabulary. Copy and add to what the child has said. And of course, remember the vital waiting time, allowing children to process what has been said, as well as giving time to formulate their comments. As children progress, begin to ask simple questions such as who, where and what, and begin to develop their sequencing languages, language. Begin to see if children can predict what's going to happen in familiar stories. As children competencies develop, support the children to relate stories to real life experiences. Ask questions about the stories. Begin to think about questions or comments they would ask or make to characters in the picture. Begin to identify stories as, as genres such as once upon a time stories and be able to name others like it. Children's development of picture and story comprehension can be recorded on the reading tracker as we have here, but it can also be recorded through the writing here we can see how children's ability to tell stories, either familiar ones they're retelling or ones which they have made up, enables them to progress to writing their own stories. Being able to demonstrate a, a, tell a story demonstrates a child's understanding of how stories work. For example, having a beginning, middle and end, as well as, as showing their understanding of how language works. For example, the big bad wolf, or the rhyming patterns in the Gruffalo. There are a number of ways that this can be supported. One of these is through the use of story maps. Story maps are representations of the main aspects of a story using pictures or props in sequence, which the adults and children can use to retell the story. They are a wonderful way of involving children in the retelling 
and acting out of a story. They don't need to be perfect with wonderful illustrations. All that is needed are prompts to tell you, help you retell the story. Maybe gather together the different elements along, the, along with the book of We Going on a Bear Hunt in your trough tray. Have containers of mud, long grass, water, fake snow, twigs, a bear and figures to invite the children to tell the story. Get the children to help gather the different elements. Or maybe involve them in drawing the pictures as well as writing labels for, the, for a real purpose. Children can retell the story using the maps, using puppets, as well as using dressing up clothes, but they can only do this if they are familiar with the story. Pi Corbett has developed an approach called Talk for Writing, which some schools in the borders have adopted. Part of this approach uses story maps to support children's ability to retell stories. This is a very structured approach to developing writing through the speaking of texts and is most effective when taken on as a whole school. However, we can use some of his ideas support to support our storytelling in the early level. Our story time in the setting or classroom is very important as one of the ways of developing children's concepts of print. We need to ensure that our expectations of the children's participating are developmentally appropriate. Remember, we're not getting the children ready for school. Take a moment to reflect on your expectations of the children listening to a story. Do they all need to be sitting or still on the floor with their legs crossed and hands in their lap? Unless the children are sitting in a W with their legs bent back either side of their hips, does it matter how they're sitting? In fact, if children are sitting in a W, it means they need to spend time developing their core strength. But children could be sitting anyway or anyhow or in fact standing. It's worth noting boys are not physically ready to be sitting cross-legged as their groin muscles are underdeveloped for sitting in this position for more than two minutes. And does it matter if the child's attention wanders away from the page unless you're deliberately showing them something? Now consider the roles that adults often take when reading a story at story time. Which of these do you think best supports children's development of concepts of print? The director. I'm sure we can imagine that in this role, the adult maintains very tight control of the groups, ensuring silence as they read to the children. In this scenario, children learn that book reading is about sitting quietly and not engaging in discussion. The entertainer. These adults make the book reading a lively time using voices and gestures to portray characters. Whilst entertaining with this approach, there is again little room for conversation as the adult dominates the delivery of the story. The timekeeper. The aim of the adult here is to stay on schedule. You may find this if the story is positioned at the end of the day where time is limited. Again, this scenario offers little opportunity for interaction. The responsive partner. In this role, the adult's aim is to encourage exploration of the book through conversation and discussion. They engage the children in the story, stimulating thought through back and forth conversations differentiated to meet the needs of each child. Although the entertainer role may have a place in bringing the story alive and enabling the children to understand the story as a whole, this should not be the only way stories are read to the children. Of course, the responsive partner role is the one which has the richness and interaction which will support children's knowledge and understanding. In order to do this effectively, we need to ensure that we have the time to take on this role. Is story time the most effective at the end of the day with the whole setting or is it better at a different point with a small group of children? You may wish to consider how the extended day now allows for greater opportunities to find times which are just right. Realising the ambition highlights that by adding a regular story time it can help to, to 
contribute to the big routines, the rhythm of the day, and create a security for children. In addition to our class or group story times, we need to be responsive to children bringing us books to share with them. We owe it to them to give them our full attention and to join them on their journey of discovery to find out what is contained within those pages or to provide that comfort and security often found within a familiar book. Think of your own reading. Do you have a favourite book which you go back to when you need a little comfort? Story of the week, as previously discussed in the oral language and phonological awareness session, is where we explored the benefits to language development, is also an approach to sharing stories and books that can hugely benefit a variety of reading concepts of print skills too, if we ensure an aspect of planning to this experience. As we consider levelling texts throughout our environment and in our spaces, we must also reflect on how we ensure a story of the week experience is engaging and developmentally appropriate. It is not about simply picking up a random book or asking the child to select a book they wish to read, although it is important here to note that this approach does not replace the child's need for toy choice, it supplements it. Children must still have choice as we engage with them and they engage with our story corners, book nicks, cosy areas and those provocations indoors and out for story sharing in a more responsive way too. Both approaches are important and bring different aspects to the child's experiences. When considering a book for a story of the week, we must ask ourselves, is the book suitable? Consider this from a cognitive skills based perspective rather than a thematic perspective. Is the book the right length with the right level of vocabulary that's supportive of both comprehension and challenge to extend and enrich? What's the purpose of the selected book? Is it linked to children's interest or your intentional promotion? Is it supporting an awareness of sound or rhyme, exploring character or setting, or developing a mathematical concept? What are the messages within the book? Are they appropriate for the stage of the children? Do the messages support positive framing and approaches in relation to health and well-being? If not, then throw it away. Arranging our book storage in a way that allows ease of access and selection of books by skills will help your approach to maximise learning opportunity while minimising the amount of time needed to facilitate it. And it then gives us time to familiar ourselves with the story selectives selected if needs be. One setting has found the story of the week approach particularly successful by exploring a different focus each day, allowing the story to have an engaging balance of that which is familiar with a little bit of something new. Practitioners select two books for the following week's possible story of the week using the above criteria, which are then provided for the children to vote on each Friday, allowing that element of choice. The little of something new is how and what they explore with the selected book the following week, each day when it's shared. So one day the focus is on prediction. Alongside the practitioners, the children make up the story, commenting on the story pictures and listening to ideas from children about what they think might happen as they work through the story from beginning to end. Another day, the focus is on book aspects, the front and back cover, spine, author, illustrator, directionality, practitioners model before reading the story through from start to finish. Word of the week is another focus where practitioners use and explore a tier two Goldilocks word they've pulled from the book as discussed again in the oral language and phonological awareness session. The adults comment on, explain and sometimes demonstrate what the word means, engaging children with real life aspects of the words through their environment too. They also take it to the theatre. 
Here, the adults and child children work together to act it out, role play it, use props and focus on vocabulary first, then next, as they explore retail narrative and sequencing. And as mentioned before, there is a favourite Friday session where after working through the book with the adults and children, sharing their favourite character, place and part as they focus on character setting and plot. It's then time to vote for their favourite of the two books for the following week. This obviously takes a little planning, but the enrichment of story time is well worth it. Through looking and recognising, children start to realise that books have stories in them, that text conveys meaning and can pick out their favourite book or books. I'm sure that you've all had that sinking feeling when a child asks you to read the book for the, what feels like the hundredth time. However, you may be fed up with reading the same stories over and over again, but the child isn't. And it's through this repetition that children learn the structure of language and stories. Children may begin to relate certain words you're saying with the marks or letters on the page. And so begins their journey to reading. Remember that this tracker goes right the way through early level and the bold statements are the benchmarks which a child is expected to achieve at the end of P1. Before we fo start formally introducing children to letters and their corresponding phoneme or sound, Children need to develop their phonological awareness, which is centred around their ability to hear sounds and speak them way before we start teaching them formal phonics. Not only does this aspect relate to the reading tracker, it also relates to the writing tracker as children begin to relate what they're reading to what they can write. Children begin attributing meaning to the marks that they are making. We can support this through the modelling of writing by commenting on the things we're writing, naming the letters and words, pointing out words on labels and signs and responding to children asking, what does that say? This is ever more important in a world where technology is increasingly being used to communicate and children have fewer opportunities to see purposeful writing in action. Through looking and recognising, children start to realise that books have stories in them, that text conveys meaning and can pick out their favourite book or books. I'm sure that you've all had that sinking feeling when a child asks you to read the book for the, what feels like the hundredth time. However, you may be fed up with reading the same stories over and over again, but the child isn't. And it's through this repetition that children learn the structure of language and stories. Children may begin to relate certain words you're saying with the marks or letters on the page. And so begins their journey to reading. Remember that this tracker goes right the way through early level and the bold statements are the benchmarks which a child is expected to achieve at the end of P1. Before we fo start formally introducing children to letters and their corresponding phoneme or sound, Children need to develop their phonological awareness, which is centred around their ability to hear sounds and speak them way before we start teaching them formal phonics. Not only does this aspect relate to the reading tracker, it also relates to the writing tracker as children begin to relate what they're reading to what they can write. Children begin attributing meaning to the marks that they are making. We can support this through the modelling of writing by commenting on the things we're writing, naming the letters and words, pointing out words on labels and signs and responding to children asking, what does that say? This is ever more important in a world where technology is increasingly being used to communicate and children have fewer opportunities to see purposeful writing in action. One way we can support the looking and recognising aspect of concepts of print is to create print-rich environments. However, in the effort to provide environments which are print-rich, we need to take care that we do not in end up with environments which are full of print. As Alistair writes, Bryce Clegg writes in his blog, print-rich display or walls full of print. Print-rich is a lovely phrase, 
but it is one that is easily misinterpreted and can cause practitioners a great deal of angst and possibly a few headaches. So, what is a print-rich environment? This is a very busy wall. Any one aspect of it is lost in the sheer explosion of text. Visual distraction and overload leading to overstimulation and possibly the few headaches Alistair Bright's Clegg refers to. As with all print, environmental print must be meaningful to the children and some of it should come from them too. Print in your environment is only rich for children if they're interested in it and engage with it. Here are a few examples. As you may be noticing, many of the examples here are of print that's related to the everyday experiences that children interact and engage with. They use it. Alongside this is a variety of print in which some familiarity with children's home experiences can be found. Pause the video to consider the environmental print in your setting. Is it meaningfully print rich or is it overwhelming? Think how you can develop environmental print in your indoor spaces and especially outdoor area, which is meaningful. You may find the Creative Star website useful for outdoor ideas. We have already explored many of the story and reading behaviours which support children becoming developmentally ready to start learning to read, as we can see from the reading trackers. However, alongside the reading aspect of concepts of print runs the writing aspect of big and small mark making. In our training package on pre-writing skills, we explore ways of developing children's physical ability to write, that fine and gross motor skills. However, we also need to support them with the why should I write and what do I write? We write for different reasons and purposes and children need to see this being modelled at home, in elk or school and in the world around them to really understand why it is something they need to be able to do and hopefully create that desire within them to express their thoughts and ideas through the written, written word. This journey begins with mark making, big and small marks, indoors and out. We have already explored many of the story and reading behaviours which support children becoming developmentally ready to start learning to read, as we can see from the reading trackers. However, alongside the reading aspect of concepts of print runs the writing aspect of big and small mark making. In our training package on pre-writing skills, we explore ways of developing children's physical ability to write, that fine and gross motor skills. However, we also need to support them with the why should I write and what do I write? We write for different reasons and purposes and children need to see this being modelled at home, in elk or school and in the world around them to really understand why it is something they need to be able to do and hopefully create that desire within them to express their thoughts and ideas through the written, written word. This journey begins with mark making, big and small marks, indoors and out. So how do we help children to develop those writing behaviours? Within the setting or classroom, both indoors and outdoors, there should be a mark making area, which provides the children with a variety of resources to explore and experiment with making marks. In the spaces, there should be a variety of pens, pencils, crayons, paintbrushes, paint, vapours, as well, provided as well as vertical and horizontal surfaces from which the children can choose. Different mark making experiences should be provided, such as making marks in the mud, with sticks using fingers to make marks in the sand or shaving foam. And of course, interaction should always be developing the child's skills, knowledge and understanding of the different concepts of print. In addition to this, 
children should be provided with the resources to meaningfully mark make within the different areas of the setting or classroom. For example, diaries or a calendar are provided along with paper and pencils in the home corner. Mark making is equipment is available in the construction area for children to plan their constructions or write notices and labels. Chalks and chalkboards, pads and pens are available in the mud kitchen to enable children to write menus and customer orders. Pause the video and think of what you already provide and decide on one modification you are going to make your, to your provision to en enable mark making across either enhancing your mark making area or by providing mark making throughout your spaces. There are various approaches which can be used to support children's mark making and develop it into writing. This is a very quick taster of two approaches. However, to enable them to be done properly, need, time needs to be spent reading the books and attending training. These are not quick fixes and your current provision should be evaluated and improvements be developed and introduced as a team as part of your ELK development plan. There is no single best approach to developing and supporting children's writing behaviours except through our positive, developmentally appropriate space, experiences and interactions. The more engaging and exciting we make it, the more likely children are to want to do it. Trisha Lee's approach in Princesses, Dragons and Helicopter Stories revolves around a practitioner scribing word for word a story which a child has offered. It's important to write down exactly what the child says, even if it's grammatically correct. Later the same day, this is acted out by the children at circle time on a designated area. As you're writing, you're modelling writing by saying each word as you write, giving the child the satisfaction and excitement of seeing their words being written down. Once you've finished scribing, read the story back, underlining the characters and identifying which of the characters they would like to play. As children gain in confidence in having their stories scribed and begin to develop their own knowledge of letters and sounds, they can begin to participate in the writing. For example, a child called Tom may know the phoneme and grapheme for t, so when he is dictating his story about a tiger, he can write the t for tiger. The book gives very clear guidelines and rules for scribing children's stories as well as how to support the children when acting them out. Greg Bottrell has a different approach to encouraging and supporting children's mark making and writing. His book, can I Go and Play Now has a large section about how to support children's mark making. He is passionate about play and how, as adults, we need to ensure that we don't adultify the children's world. He often renames or rebrands things with imaginative use of language to create a magical world in which the children are immersed. One of his suggestions is to make the small world area a story kingdom, which immediately plants the seeds in children's minds that their imaginative play is storytelling. He rebrands the mark-making area to a message centre and instills in the children the idea that mark-making is messaging. He uses a variety of symbols. Think about the marks children need to be able to create before we introduce letter formation in the pre-writing training to send messages. The joy of this is that the symbols can mean anything to anyone. These messages are hidden around the setting for children to find and provision is made for the children to respond. He's well worth following on Facebook on his Can I Go and Play Now page for lots of wonderful play-based ideas and he produces specific training about how to develop his message centre idea. As we're getting towards the end of our session today, here are a th few thoughts about why learning to read and write is so important and why we should be developing these concepts of print for children. Before we go, did we achieve what we set out to do? Hopefully you will now be familiar with the four areas which children need to develop in order to understand those concepts of print and you're also more knowledgeable about your role 
and have ideas on how you can enhance your provision of spaces, experiences and interactions. We hope that you found this training useful and that it has given you a greater understanding and an appreciation of the complex journey our children go on to learn to read and write and how as in adults accompanying them along every step of the way we can support and facilitate their progress. As a result, you may be thinking of changes you wish to make to your current provision. So, in order to help you implement any changes in your setting, we would recommend that you create a plan which will help you to consider your goals and monitor your progress. We have attached with this package an example format used by the Care Inspectorate, which also uses the Plan, Do, Study, Act PDSA methodology. You may wish to use this or create a format of your own. For more information on how to imp plan improvements in your setting, please use the link on the screen. If you have any questions, please contact the Early Years Teacher Team. Thank you.